Range maps are a vital, often underappreciated part of most field guides. Few of us spend much time looking at them. They just don't hold one's eye like the plates do. But a closer look soon reveals just how useful and informative they really are. Range maps are a graphic representation of a species distribution. In the Peterson Field Guide to Birds of North America, the maps are color-coded to show how a species range varies by season, which means they tell us not only where a particular species can be found, but also when. Here's the range map for the great blue heron. At first glance, we see three different colors. You can probably guess just by looking what they signify. Red, traditionally associated with heat, represents the summer-only range of this species. Blue, a cold color, denotes their winter-only range, while purple, the combination of red and blue, shows where great blue herons can be found year-round. Let's put this information to use. Say you're birding North Dakota in June. You see a large pale raptor on a post in the distance. Being so far north, you might think at first that you found a snowy owl. But a look at the range map shows that for snowy owls, North Dakota is like Florida for many people, a southerly winter retreat. Snowy owls breed on the high Arctic tundra. Return to North Dakota in January, and you might see a snowy owl. In June, your bird is more likely to be a pale, red-tailed hawk. The chickadees many of us have outside our windows can often be identified much more easily by range than by plumage, using just the small inset maps next to the species profiles. Are you in New York? It's a black-capped. In Arkansas, it's a Carolina. The Peterson Field Guide also provides larger maps at the back of the book, showing more detail. Looking at the large maps gives us a lot more information about our chickadees. If you're in Tennessee, you've probably got Carolinas, unless you're in the Smokies or neighboring mountains, where they have blackcaps. And as the map notes, blackcaps do move south a bit some winters. Range maps are meant to be only a general representation of a species range, however. Does Colorado's being blanketed almost entirely in red on the Sora's map mean that you'll find these wetland birds crawling around everywhere there? No, it does not. But patches of suitable habitat statewide will have Sora's in summer. Some birds have extremely limited ranges. Want to see a yellow-billed magpie? Better head to California, and even then you have to be in the right place. Several other graphic elements often appear on range maps. For seabirds, the oceanic or pelagic range is shown striped. Dotted lines indicate areas of brief or sporadic occurrence. Each year, some brown pelicans roam far north of their core range after breeding. This dispersal, which may last only a few weeks before the birds head back south, is indicated by a red dash line. The common red pole has a blue dash line on its map, showing this species penchant for wintertime incursions southward. Of course, migratory birds need to get from their wintering grounds to the breeding territory every year. Zones of transient occurrence are left uncolored, but are generally on a fairly straight line between the blue and red patches. Variations to this rule are noted in text, as in the American Golden Plover, which comes north up the center of the continent, then returns south along a more easterly path. Can you guess the species from the range map? This one has a reputation as a harbinger of spring, but as many birders know, it's actually found year-round over much of our area. Of course, it's the American robin. Here's another bird hailed as a sign of spring, but one that really does entirely depart for warmer climes in the winter, purple martin. Many maps have comments printed on them describing population increases and declines, extra-limital occurrences, and regular winter or summer ranges outside North America. Lots of birders find that the chance of discovering birds outside their normal range is one of the most exciting aspects of birding. Being winged creatures, birds are prone to wandering. Sometimes, stray individuals may be merely misdirected. Others may represent the vanguard of a true change in distribution. Range maps can answer all sorts of questions. Is Kentucky really a good place to see a Kentucky warbler? In summer, yes. Get to know the range maps in your field guide a little better. It's guaranteed to make you a more knowledgeable birder.